Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Okay, Mart Togweiler, 1962. He was a very accomplished diver and, and this research. He had a dive boat and underwater photography. He was already uh, doing a great job for those days, like there were 16 divers in North America, and other more than that, but there weren't very many divers in Mart Togwater from Long Beach, California, from Southern California, anyway, um, uh, decided he would help the diving community by publishing a book. He did exactly that. He'd already made several camera housing. You see, in those days, you couldn't walk into a dive store. Uh, you know, there, there weren't very many dive stores to start with. And, and if you walk into a dive store, uh, they certainly did not have amphibious cameras or underwater housings. They had, there were a variety of things. There was a, a neat thing that we had on our vintage playlist a little while ago uh, called the Aqua Eye, which was a plastic bag with a piece of plate glass on one side. You put your camera in and you could squeeze the controls, but there weren't really camera housings the way we know them today. Um, so Mart wrote a book and it became a famous book. You won't find the library today. It's, it's, it's a famous vintage book. And of course, it's only famous among the diving community, so there weren't a lot of them. But this is the book. How to Build Your Own Underwater Camera Housing by Mark Togwater. It was that simple. And it was a great little book. It was very simple. He explained uh, uh, how you would get a, uh, some piece of plastic, acrylic plastic tubing. You see it there? And he showed how to cut it to the right size and how to sand it. And then, and then you would take your camera and you would measure your camera, you see, and, and get some square pieces of plastic and make one of those square pieces of plastic for the bottom of the camera, put a bolt through it so it held the camera, and then measure the square piece so it fit exactly carefully inside the plastic tube. And then you would uh, uh, cut those pieces of plastic, sand them, and shape them, and fit them into the tube so that eventually the camera ended up mounted inside the tube, kind of like this. You see? And then you could... Uh, uh, Go to the internet in those days and order how no, you could not go to the internet. You would try to find a company in a variety of ways, um, yellow pages, calling other divers and so on, and, uh, and uh, find a company that made uh, camera controls, glands, glands they were called, like a gland, like your uh, adrenaline gland and so on, they were called a gland, but controls, controls that would slide in and out, ones that would rotate, that you could mount in your new underwater housing, to control and make right, the controls in the camera work, you see. Now, Mart actually had in his uh, in his book, he actually had a supply of those controls. I just saw them there a second there, and you see, so there's some of the controls and uh, and where to buy them. There are different places you could buy those from. So you would get your controls and get your camera mounted inside, and you set the controls up and drill for the controls. And Mart showed you how to do all of that, and I just saw the control. Here it is right here, how to mount the controls. You still see that, Kev, that good? And, uh, and, and uh, there you go, you see, there's a control to fire the shutter. And you had to have a control for the film advance. What the heck is that? A lot of you guys have no idea what a film advance is, do you? Well, Google it. <laughs> anyway, so there were various controls you had to have. And eventually, if you did a good job, you would end up with a underwater housing that worked. And it would look like this. What do you think of that? I look familiar? Why, sure. We just saw one just like this in Mark, Mark Togwater's uh, book. That's exactly what this is. This was made from directions given from that little book. There you go. Homemade camera housing from the late 50s, early 60s. Pretty slick, huh? Piece of tubing, two ends, all carefully sanded machines so they were perfect. Controls on top. One control goes up and down. One control swivels. These controls actually still move. Swivels. That works the various camera controls. Down inside, I'm going to turn to the big cave. Can you see right in the middle? Can you see that flat piece there with a slot in it? That's where the camera mounted. And the back came off and on. So at the end of the dive, you could take the back off. It, had, it has eight, eight or 12 of these, eight of these uh, um, wing nuts. And, and once you took those off, you could take the back off like this. And it was sealed with cork. Sealed with cork. Cork or rubber, either one worked pretty well. You had to replace the cork pretty frequently, but, you know, it worked pretty well. 
you would test it first. You wouldn't just put your good camera in there and throw it in the ocean. We'd take it down and check it. Uh, we'd put a, put a weight in it, two pound weight, take it on a dive and check the controls to make sure it wasn't leaking. And then the other thing you had to do was make it uh, so that it was negative or at least neutral. Because when you first made this thing, it would like a cork. You, if you lost uh, your grip on it, up to the surface it would go. So you had to make it neutral. How'd you do that? Well, that was actually pretty easy and kind of fun. You got some lead. Right there. There's a piece of lead from this housing. There it is. That's the piece of lead that, uh, I don't know whose housing this is. This is not mine. But uh, this is the piece of lead from uh, this housing that the diver took. And he shaped it to fit the tube. You see, it's pretty neat. And he got it roughly what he figured was the right amount of lead, probably from trial and error, putting lead in until it was close. And then he put it in. Put the camera in, then he put the film in, got it all working, and, and it was a little bit too heavy. He didn't want to drop like a stone, so he drilled some of the lead out a couple of times. And he tried it again. Still a bit heavy, so he drilled it a few more times, get a bit more. And eventually, he fine-tuned it. Some of these holes don't go all the way through. He took a little bit. Of, this guy was really fussy. Whoever made this housing was really fussy. He wanted it to be just exact. Finally, he got that lead just perfect. So in the area where he was diving anyway, <clears throat> he could put it all together, put his camera in, take it in the water, and, and it would be almost perfectly neutral. It was nice when you had a camera housing that was neutral. And you know what neutral means? It means if you had the camera in front of you like this, and you let go of it, nothing happens it probably will start to rise very, very slowly or maybe sink very, very slowly. But neutral means it stays there. Now, it might move around a little bit with the currents, but at least it doesn't drop like a stone. So that's what divers were interested in getting to. You put your camera in, new film in it, and uh, put your back on it, and off you go. Back into the kelp forest, start taking some more pictures. And it was amazing. I mean, any diver in those days who had a camera housing and uh, get down there. I took pictures underwater to show to his friends and family or the local dive club. Yeah, we had dive clubs. Uh, he was a pretty, uh, pretty special, pretty popular diver. So there you go. I thought I'd show that to you. A homemade housing made exactly as Mart Togwater from 1962, his book, his famous book, his directions are exactly the same. There it is. Pretty neat. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. A little bit of interesting stuff from the early days of scuba vintage diving. Aren't you glad you uh, live in uh, this century? You're going to pick up a little cheap camera and jump in the water and take digital photos. Uh, it was fun though. Talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.